G'day and welcome to A Down Under Yarn. I am your host Fiona, also known as Fifi Kins. Today is Thursday the 1st of May and this is episode number 68. I am also the dyer behind Solar Flare Fibres. There will be information about tomorrow's shop update at the end of this episode. So I do encourage you to hang around for that. Um, let's just get into things. Week that was. It's been... It's been one of those really busy weeks because, as you can see behind me, the sun's been out and I've had a great week dying. I've died, oh, sorry, the dog's just here with her bone. She just tried to put it in my hand. Um, I have died up quite a, quite a bit for the zombie apocalypse, which I'm heading off to in June. So I feel really, really happy that I've been able to do that. Um, so starting, I think, Saturday or Sunday, I think Saturday... It was, I mean, the, the forecast has actually been scattered showers, but we haven't seen any showers at all, which is, I'm not complaining. So, oh, phew. Really glad, though, that the sun has been out for extended periods. I've been able to get quite a bit dyed. Mimmel's helped me with my trolley that I use to transport my jars from the laundry or my dye area outside. Um, two of the wheels came off, which was making life really challenging. He's put two big wheels on the back. Um, it's more difficult to turn now, but it's, it rolls a lot easier. So that's good. I feel like I'm, I really am back on track. I've spent the last couple of days trying to do a full stock inventory, um, which has been good because at the start of the week I thought I was out of one of my bases and I'm thinking, oh no, and it's one of the ones where the, um, the wholesaler I get it from, I have to order 10 kilos at a time and I didn't have enough to justify a 10 kilo order, let alone funds to do that. Plus I want to order from another supplier. And I was thinking, mm, but I found a couple of bags of it. So that's all I needed. So really, really pleased with that. Um, I know some people have got their first round of the yarn club. I've had quite a few messages and I'm still amazed that it's getting to people overseas faster than it's getting to people within Australia. I don't know. I don't understand it. It's just the way it is. Um, that's the way our postal system works, plus I'm in a regional area, which doesn't help, I suppose. Um, Administratia. Uh, late yesterday, finished the, I suppose, midnight last night. It's midnight almost everywhere. It's, was it 4 o'clock here now? So it's 8 o'clock in um, Hawaii, and I don't know how many lists of, how many people I've got in Hawaii who'll be watching so I do need to get around to drawing for the knit a hug knit along and I've really really enjoyed seeing everyone's <coughs> projects and seeing um, what they've been able to achieve and we have a few entries we have 16 entries so and I will just grab because I believe it's just over here so holding horses and I will be back okay I'm back I actually stopped the recording because it was easier rather than editing it out later so that's what the pause was um, the prize is your choice we have yarn beautifully donated uh, beautiful yarn donated to us by Atelier Yarn Beg from Atelier and there it's your choice one's for me and one's for you but I'm going to let the winner choose so we have this one here which is Atelier Colorist, which is merino nylon sock fingering. It's a four ply yarn, 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon, 400 yards, 366 meters, 100 grams. Um, and the color is acid washed denim. So it's atelieryarn.etsy.com. Um, and also Atelier Yarn is on Facebook. So that's how you spell Atelier. I'm assuming that's the right way around for you. If not, I apologise. So that is that one there. And as you can see, that is really beautiful. It's got shades of blues and greys and oh, really, really beautiful. This one as well is just as stunning. This is Atelier Sydney, which is merino fingering sock four ply, 100% superwash merino, 400 yards per 100 grams. Uh, the colour is heaven. So again, Atelier yarn. And that is this one here, which is actually, that's not too bad a colour representation. It's a beautiful blue. So there is that. So if you are the lucky winner, please let me know and let me know which one you want, either the acid wash or the heaven. So yeah, your choice because I will be happy with either of them. So we need between numbers 2 and 16 because there were 16 entries. I'm just going to put the paper there. Um, Meg wraps these absolutely beautifully. So as you can see, it was number 18 was the last number that I drew whenever I did that last. I'm going to click Generate. 
And it's number seven. Lucky number seven. Let me have a look. That'll be on the first page. Sorry. Um, number seven. I'm just scrolling back to it. Oh, that's lovely. That's Yonder Woman who has knit a beautiful bright red baby hat. Yonder Woman knit quite a few charity items. That's really good. They're gonna, it's going to be a lovely hug for someone. Um, so please get in touch with me. Let me double check. Uh, Yana Woman's in Perth, which is lovely. She doesn't get a lot of cold weather. Oh, she's got a fantastic, oh, fantastic bio on her thing. Anyway, and I am friends with her already. So she has already knit with Solar Flare Fibres. Um, and now she'll be able to knit with some Atelier yarn. So that is fantastic. Congratulations, uh, Melinda. Please be in touch with me with your address and which skein you would like. So that was our knit along. Um, and, and a lot of people haven't entered things but have contacted me about, let's put those out of the way, contacted me about um, their projects that they've done and their, their ideas for things, which I've really, really appreciated. And I think it's enabled people to get talking. Um, often around Mother's Day, if it's a difficult time, it's difficult to talk about because there is the commercialization of everything and there is. Um, I mean, everywhere you go in the shops, anything from CDs and DVDs to microwaves to new computers to new telephones to anything that you think, anything they sell, they've got an excuse for Mother's Day. Excuse me. No, it's just water. Nothing serious in there. Um, so it, it can be a challenging time. Um, I know one of the podcasts I listen to, one of the presenters there um, had a really rough week and I wish I had time to knit her up a hug. Um, but I'm hoping that by highlighting that Mother's Day is not the hallmark holiday for lots of people, um, that it can get people to think as well. So that's part of my reasoning behind having the knitter hug knit along. Um, I've had a couple of suggestions for knit alongs later in the year. I will still be doing my... Um, gonna knit along in November and December but I'll probably do something in August September maybe we'll see we'll see how we go see what happens um I've got lots of knitting goals myself but I don't know if I'm going to get to or not anyway let's get on to the knitting I have a finished object and it's something you haven't actually seen ah oh. How cute is this? This is Ruby the lo Lovable Huggable Monster. And it's a Jenna Krupa pattern. Jenna is Retro Lemon. Um, she has the Retro Lemon podcast and she's the uh, designer behind Retro Lemon Designs. <coughs> Pardon me. This is a really, really cute stuffy. Now, I have trouble with stuffies getting arms and legs to attach properly. And I'm not really an embroiderer and I had to embroider the mouth. So I kind of made up what I was doing. I did a wool embroidery course about 20 years ago, but I don't remember very much of it. And plus, that was um, embroidering on blanket wool, you know, blanket, you know, felted type blankets. Uh, whereas this is knitted, knitted stuff. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I just made up what I did, and it's kind of cute. So this is out of 716 Knit 716 Boss, which is the DK Worsted Weight um, Stripey Yarn. And the colourway is Big Brother is watching, I believe, or something. Let me have a quick look. It's called, it's called I'm Way Ahead of You, Big Brother. Of course it is. I knew it was Big Brother something. So, yeah, beautiful, rich golden yellow with the blue. This is actually for another raffle prize. Um, it is May Day March here on Sunday. And one of the organisations I'm involved with has a raffle um, for May Day. So, um, a hamper raffle. And I just said that I would do something knitted. And I thought this was a, a nice opportunity to do a softy. And one that I had in my queue for a while. So, I really recommend it. It theoretically took me three days but it would have I would have been able to do it in a day if I'd sat down to do it it was just little fiddly things like arms and legs and they just do my head in at times um, and then I have to attach them I did attach the yellow leg with blue yarn and I got to the stage of at the moment I want to get this finished because I, I think it's just the psychological thing of having to attach arms and legs um, I'm not sure anyway I kitchened 
seams closed and I'm really really pleased with how that went um, the kitchener you can hardly tell any of them that have been kitchened so yeah not too bad I'm quite pleased um, so there's that a, an actual finished object my knitter hug is not a finished object I had I've not been sleeping well and I did hear something on the radio yesterday which I tried out today they said that if you are going to nap nap before two o'clock or three o'clock I think they said I'd only nap for half an hour so I had half an hour nap at midday um, it's actually less than that, it was about 20 minutes and woke up from it feeling absolutely hideous and absolutely revolting but had a big cup of coffee and felt fantastic now so as long as I start then winding down um, eight nine o'clock which is what I'm hoping will happen so I'm in bed early enough we will see this is the lilac wish lace shawl I believe that is the name of it yep lilac wish lace shawl um, I'm not sure who it's by does it say on here I like Wish Lace Shawl by Alina Apisov. Um, it is a paid for pattern and it is for a friend of mine. I'm hoping to have it finished by next week. I am using Skein, the Merino, no, the Silk Cashmere Lace, which is a discontinued base, which is a shame because it is absolutely stunning to knit with. I got this as part of the um, yarn club that Kristen had. Oh, a couple of years ago now it's been in my sitting in my stash um, it's called sweet violet and it really is just beautiful so whoops there's my crochet hook I'll get to why I've got a crochet hook in a minute so here we are the it is a, a curved curved shawl crescent that's the word I'm looking for crescent shaped shawl um, and the Stockinette section is broken up by little bits of little rows, pearl rows here, or little garter rows, knit rows, um, which really does help break it up and it means you don't have to keep counting and find out how many stitches you're up to with your increases. So I did that um, and I've started on the lace pattern. Now I'll turn it upside down. I've done a couple of rows of the lace pattern, including the first row of noops. So that I was hoping to do some more but something I really the next row has um, I think noop pearl noop um, in the pattern and that's double the amount of noops that I had in the first row so I need to be able to concentrate now I have never done no I, I tell a lie I did some bobbles in a pair of Aaron Ray weight Aaron weight mittens um, and I can't remember how I did them but I suspect they were done in one stitch whether or not they were done with a crochet hook, I'm not sure. I'm, I honestly can't remember how I did them. These noops, I started off using the crochet hook method. Now that is the method where you get your crochet hook, you get your stitch, you go in with the stitch, um, yarn over, pull it back, yarn over, through the stitch, yarn over, pull it back, yarn over, through the stitch, yarn over, pull it back. And you've got your seven stitches on the um, crochet hook then you yarn over it again and you pull it all the way through now I'm not a crochet crocheter I'm, I am not very adept with a crochet hook I had trouble I did the first couple where are we down this end um, it is down this end I did the first couple with the crochet hook and it just I just wasn't happy with them I couldn't get the stitches to line up I couldn't get the I, I had trouble um, you see where the crochet hook tapers there I mean I know a knitting needle does too I just had trouble getting the stitches in the same place all the time so they weren't just bundled bunched up down near the hook and I was getting a bit concerned and I thought what am I going to do and in the end I did a combination of the knit and crochet and I found that in doing that I had to make them as loose as possible so I can probably show you very briefly this is not a noop stitch area but what I do is put do them as if I'm knitting them so going you know, around and over make sure it's got plenty of room and around and up and around and through this must be really interesting for you like that one two three four five 
and around and through and around and up. So now I have that and that's got, I pulled that off the needle. And as you can see, there's quite a, a decent hole through there for me to slip the crochet hook through. Now, I haven't actually made that one as loose as I could have. I'm not going to do it now because you can't really see. Um, but I can just undo that there like that. And then once I get the crochet hook in, I can yarn over and pull it back through. I found that for me has worked the best. So I just thought I'd pass that tip along in case any of you are needing to do loops in any form of knitting. Um, I like the texture they give. I'm looking forward to getting past them though. There's only a few rows of them and then it's on to straight lace. Um, it's a 50, I've got two 50 gram skeins of this beautiful yarn. I'm actually hoping that I only use one of them and the other one I can use to knit a shawl for myself because it really is beautiful. The depth of colour is amazing. And I'm trying to find a way to put it against me. I'm not sure what I need to put it against, but yeah, as you can see through there, it's got spots of green and it's got the purples and really, really, really lovely. So that is the only work in progress I've got to show. I've also been working on my low tide cardigan. I got to the stage where I got to take off the first ball. I had a tiny bit left and I think it's enough for me to do a square on my blanket. Um, and it would have been enough for me to go up and back again, but I just had enough of alternating skein, so I just thought, no, I'm going to do that. So now it'll be all steam ahead, I'm hoping, um, with that. I've got, I think, four or five inches to go. I don't know if I can get that finished this week or not. I am going down to Townsville with Imogen and a friend on Saturday. She's going to Groove in the Moon Music Festival on Sunday with her friend. Um, originally there was going to be seven girls, but a whole lot of them have made other arrangements. Um, so it means that it's just her, the two of them and myself, which means I don't have to hire a car now. I can just go down with them. Um, they've booked an apartment for us to stay in. I'm fine with that. I'm hoping to catch up with some friends on Sunday while they're at the festival. Um, and yeah, we'll see how we go. And then driving back first thing Monday morning to get her to school, not too late. Townsville's 350 k's away. Um, but it'll probably take about four and a half, five hours. And I've said you're going to get to school for part of the day, even if you're not there for the start of it. So she's not too happy about that, but so be it. Um, but I will have time to knit and I'm taking the low tide with me. I'm hoping to take some socks as well to finish off some Mystic Spiral socks. Um, I have one pair to finish and then I really want to do another pair or two or three because they really are such a fun pattern. There's so many people having knit alongs for them this month as well. Um, so that is that. Uh, acquisitions. So spinning. I've done a bit of spinning, but there's not much to show and I'm hoping that I will have some finished next week as well for that. Acquisitions. I First of all, Bendigo Woolen Mills had a sale a couple of weeks ago on their Murano base. Now Murano is a long colour repeat base and they're 200 gram balls and I think they were going out for 8 or $9 and I thought hello. So I picked two colours because I wasn't quite sure what they um, would look like. As you can see, this one here is mainly blues with a tiny bit of purple through, purplish blues. This one is um, more of a rainbow sort of thing with burgundy and purple and greens and blues and a tan in there. Um, the reason I got them is I would like to do the driftwood uh, jump up pullover. It is, I, I know that Megan from the Stockinette Zombies and Jenna from Retro Lemon have done it recently in stripes with long colour repeats. Um, I got the grey yarn to go with it because that was the only um, suitable colour they had. I really wanted a grey. This is the rustic blue-grey, which is what I used in the, this is the 8-ply, which is sort of a worsted weight, um, light worsted weight. I used the 12-ply, I think, last year for my fisherman's, lighthouse keeper's wife, fisherman, whatever it was, lighthouse jumper, whatever it is. Um, so I'm going to use that with the blue. To do that. I'm not sure when I'm going to cast that on, um, but it will get done. And hey, I've got other ideas of these other jumpers I want to do, and I've got yarn for them as well. So I need to get something done for Bendigo. Um, well, I want to get something done for my Bendigo jumper this year. Just not sure what I'm going to do. Once my low tide's finished, I really want to do the Hita Fude, um, which apparently is how you pronounce it, according to Imogen, who has lived in Japan for a few months. Um, that cardigan uh, and I'd like to get that done for the ZK plus another couple of tops to wear but I don't think I'm that's far too um, 
much to think of. The other thing that arrived this week, I got my second shipment in the Deptian Downton Club from Yarn vs Zombies. And this one here is Mary and Matthew. So that is a beautiful red which is to illustrate Mary and there's half a skein of the gold for Matthew. I'm not sure if I'd use them together. Um, they really are lovely though, beautifully done. It's Superwash Merino. So, oh, it's actually, it says Superwash Merino Merino. So I'll have to double check with um, Kiki what base that is. I'm thinking they'll probably be a shawl. I'm not too sure though. So that is those. The other thing is I am part of the Aussie Swappers group and we just had our pink swap. Um, if you remember, I knit the cow, which I sent off. The thing I always forget is that I'm going to be receiving a package too. So I received a lovely package and I got some gorgeous yarn from New Zealand from a dyer called Doe Arnott, if you can see there, who's a hand dyer and weaver. Sorry, there we are, doespins.blogspot.com. Um, my beautiful swap partner had been to New Zealand for a retreat and was able to pick this up there. It is gorgeous. It is BFL silk, um, four ply, 200 metres per skein, so it's 400 metres here. And, and it's hard to tell. It's showing up a lot more purple than it is. It's more sort of a magenta pink colour. Really, really, really beautiful. Not sure what I'm going to do with this one either, but I'm thinking something lacy because it's just going to be gorgeous around the neck so that is that and also I have to show this as well because I just love it this is a DPN case which I desperately needed and I just adore the fabric and she included a set of DPNs metallic DPNs in pink a set of five that apparently were her I think her mother's or her grandmother's so love that um, and yeah So that was really nice to receive. Um, very quickly, I'm going to move on to the shop now. So if you leave now, bye-bye. But I will be talking about gradients. Gradients seem to be all the rage at the moment. Long colour change repeats. And I've been wanting to start dyeing them for ages. I bought materials to make a warping board um, ooh, about four months ago. And I finally got around to it this week. Um, If you watch the Skein podcast, you'll know that Kristen had a couple of snafus when she was dyeing up her first gradients. I did too. Not as bad as having to throw out merino cashmere yarn. Um, I grabbed a bag of wool and didn't look at the label and thought it was, I thought it was, I knew it was going to be a Zoya and I thought it was the Zoya thick. Forgetting that the last lot I ordered, which I got from um, someone who was going, who was stopping dyeing themselves, is Zoya extra thick, which is more an Aram weight yarn instead of a DK weight yarn. So here's me thinking that I've built this warping board that's got one yard up and back. So I did my maths and how many, so I wanted to get, um, I actually wanted to get um, five, I think I wanted five to begin with. Um, what did I want? I wanted five to begin with, uh, five things, because I'm going to do mirrors, in, in especially in thicker yarns, because then you can knit some mittens and they can be the same. That's part of my reasoning behind it. So I want to do some mirrored gradients. So I did my maths and I'm thinking, so I need to go around here X number of times. And I'm doing it, I'm thinking, I'm getting through a lot of yarn. And I thought, hmm, I'm not, I'm not going to get to where I wanted to get to. And... In the end, I got to, but I, I must have been going for five. I must have been, go, I don't know if I was going for the full nine all the way across. I was going for ten, that's right. I was going for ten, and I wanted five and five. That's it. And I'm thinking, because I thought that would be really nice to have a mitten with um, five. Anyway, I got to five, and I'm thinking, there's no way I'm going to get back. I'm more than halfway through. So I thought I'll keep going and see where I go. So I got to seven. It's actually seven and about three yards, and I thought... Okay, that's fine, that's a rainbow, that's cool. So I tied it all off, and this had taken me a long time to work this out. So it took me about an hour to, to, um, warp, it, to warp it up. And I thought, okay, well, if I've done that, and I did that with that, that means that theoretically I, I should be doing 
X number and that'll get me three. So I did that for the next one and it worked out. I'm thinking, oh, I mustn't have measured this properly. So I'm blaming my measurements. So I tied that off. And I did this at about 10 o'clock at night on Monday night during the Aussie VKN. Tuesday morning, I get up and I soak them. As I've tied them all off and I've worked it all out how I've tied them off and I'm thinking there's no way they're going to get tangled, which, fair enough. And I soak them and I prepare my dyes. And I'm thinking I'm going to have seven jars, I'm going to do it full rainbow and put them outside. And then the other one, I'm going to do like a pink, pink, purple, a pink, a purple, purple, pink type thing. That's the sort of thing I was envisaging or, was that pink, or whatever it was. And I thought, yep, yeah, no, that'll be fine. And then I pick up the first one out of my tub that I soak my wool in and I wring it out gently. And for some reason, I think, ah, oh, this is the one that's got three because it sort of, well, the way it hung, it had three divisions and I thought, great. So I grabbed the first division and put it in the first die and thought, why have I got four sections left now? And then realised what I'd done. And I thought, well, there's no way that I am going to be able to, um, I'm not going to be able to do this in a way that is going to do a rainbow now. So what am I going to do? I thought, I'll divide this up into the next lots and I'll put them in there. So I think there was a two, a two and a three, whatever it was, and I couldn't quite work it out. So I thought, okay, there's that one. Then I, the second one came out and I thought, okay, that one was fine and that one worked well. So the first one is this one here. So this is Zoya, extra thick. So as you can see, it is two plies of merino, one ply of superwash merino. This one here, um, then when I was rescaining it today, decided to get tangled up in me, but I've got it all untangled and all wound around here. So as you can see, it has the purple on the outside, the pink and the orange. Now, these two this week I'm calling one of a kind because of my snafu and me getting confused about which one was which. So that one there is a one of a kind. I also have a purple, purple pink. And it's actually showing the two different types of purple. This one is going to be a lot less pronounced for those two. And then it's got the pink there in the middle. So these two will be up in the shop tomorrow. I have today warped up um, another one that I will be dyeing in this base. And then I'm going to be warping up a whole lot of fingering weight as well. And again, today I warped up a mirrored gradient. So I'll be warping up some more mirrors and some more just long gradients as well. Um, I can't dye too many each day because I don't have the right number of jars. And if I'm going to be doing like four or five colours, I need the four or five little jars. And at the moment I've got... 20 little jars and I don't have space for many more so it's just going to be something that's going to be something that I'll be able to put a few up each week I'm hoping that is the plan plus have a whole lot to take to the zombie nip apocalypse so those two are going up in the shop so it's a new base and a new yarn process um, so there we are they are wound into cakes so you can see the gradients as well um, I made sure they're caked up nicely so that is that now the other thing I've been doing, then I had, I had the other four lots of dye and I thought, ah, so I just soaked um, a sole, a skein of sole and put that in there. So I've got this here, it has the four colours, which is the purple, the green, the yellow, and there's a blue in there as well. So that will have sort of some sort of longish colour repeat. Usually I only do three colours, this one has four. So let's go up as a one of a kind. Um, I have done a an inventory stock take this week because when we had the cyclone coming through I ended up um, putting a whole lot of yarn that I had in one box so I needed that box into another box and got, all got confused all got muddled up so I have been able to get the yarn sort out what's actually listed in the shop what I'm taking to um, Minnesota and what I have that has not been listed and stuff that I have dyed for the shop so without further ado we have this week we have some sole. We have dragon scales. There we go. And sole always dyes up dragon scales really nicely with the maroons and the blues. We have sea glass. And I have labelled all of these. Sea glass is a lot greener than that. You'll see that when it gets there. We have heartthrob, another perennial favourite, which against sole 
I don't know if it's the extra yardage or what it is, it always dyes things up really nicely. Um, I have the eyes have it. Again, you get quite a bit of variation in the blues. That is all the souls, I believe. Yes, I have in Anya, which is the MCN base. So Soul, sorry, is the 100% uh, Superwash Merino 490 yards, which is great for shawls or for baby garments. It's one of those ones that if I have this and the Anya base, which is the MCN base, I often have to unravel an end to count how many plies there are so I can work out which base it is because it feels like there's something else in there. It is so, so soft. It's really super fine merino. I do also have an eyes have it, the eyes have it in Anya. And if I put them together, you can see on the Anya, it's a wee bit lighter. Um, but again, same recipe. There's that. I have... I'm looking for my onion. What else did I have? Here we are, burning orange. I, I've been working out different ways of dyeing up for the retreat. I decided to have an orange day and dyed up 30 odd skeins of burning orange and thought never again am I just going to do the one colour because rinsing them was just, a, just going on, even though it was different bases. Um, but here's an onion. I think that's all I have in onion. Now in Boulder, I found a confetti pink cake that never made its way into the shop. So that's pretty fun. I'm glad that I've got that to go into the shop. I have in Burning Orange, I have a Z Hobes, which is 55% BFL, 45% silk, 232 yards per 100 grams. And it's really a DK um, to light worsted type weight. So there is that. That would make a really stunning shawl. I'm hoping to use a skein of that to do um, an Age of Brass and Steam. And again, Burning Orange in the Zoya Thick Base. This is the 246 yards per 100 grams. Um, and as you can see, it gives a beautiful heathered effect when you knit up with it. So again, great for babies' items, even though it's not super wash, um, but also for softies, really good for softies. Now I have Apollo. I have a Heartthrob in Apollo. I have a Irish Eyes, which is a nice green with sort of brown, brownish overtones. And I have a denim, which doesn't have a label on it yet, which needs a label. I have another special that's going up in the shop. Um, during a VKN, well, a couple of months ago now, um, someone I was actually chatting to had ordered this yarn. And I said, I'm just rescaining it for you. And as I'm rescaining it, it just kept snapping. So this here is an emerald in the Amaterasu base, which is the lace weight base. Now, normally this retails for $30. Um, this skein here has several knots in it. Most of the knots have been tied with weaver's knots or magic knots, um, but there will be some that haven't because I just didn't do that. So I believe there are about five or six knots in the whole skein. So I will be selling this one in the shop for $20 um, because it does have all the knots and it will have that listed there. So that will be going up tomorrow as well. The shop update will be tomorrow morning. Probably be closer to 10 than 9.30 because I've got a fibre crafters meeting at 9. Um, and I really can't just sort of stay in the middle. Excuse me, I'm just doing my shop update. So that is that. I think that's about all there is. I'm trying to keep to around 30 minutes and this has just hit the 30 minute mark. Um, I've got others. I've still got some more yarn that I will be putting out for next week and dyeing up some more. So... Thank you all for tuning in and again I still have shawl kits. There are still some shawl kits available um, and I'd really encourage you to go and have a look at the shawl kits for the, I'm calling it the post-apocalyptic shawl kits um, because they'll be um, starting out at the zombie knit apocalypse, that's when the clues will be released. However, the shawl does have another name and I've forgotten what it is and it's gone from me and I'm sorry Josh, it's like you remembering the name of my podcast. Um, anyway, so until next week. Oh, sorry, those, so those are there to order in the shop. There are still some spots there for the Love for Late and Colourway as well. I do have a couple of those that I've discovered that I've dyed up that went for orders. So I'm not sure why. I'm just going to double check that. So I know I've sent off all my orders um, and I will then work that one out and um, let you know next week because I'll probably put them up in the shop as not as pre-orders but as actual uh, orders. So until next week, I will say uru, cheers, bye.